Hello everyone. Welcome to the video tutorials on the course Foundations of Mathematics. This is part 3 of the first chapter Statements and Logic. The title of this video tutorial is Statements Having Multiple Quantifiers. In this video, we will look at statements having existential and universal quantifiers. We will negate statements having existential and universal quantifiers. By the end of this module, you should be able to identify multiple quantifiers in statements, write the statements involving multiple quantifiers, negate statements involving multiple quantifiers, and apply the logic in real life situations. So I'll begin with an example. Supposing uh, I have an example S1 which says in every shelf in the library there is a mathematics book. Now if you look at this uh, statement closely you will realize that there are two both the quantifiers in the statement. When I say in every shelf in the library I have the universal quantifier appearing here and if you look at the second half of the statement, it says there is a mathematics book. So this is the existential quantifier. Okay, so you assume a library and in the library there are shelves and in the shelves there are books. So what this statement says is, if you go in the library and you look at each of the shelves in the library, you will find a mathematics book in each of those shelves. Okay. So, if I uh, collect all the shelves in the library and I form the set X, okay, supposing X is the set of all shelves in the library, then how can I write the first half of the statement using quantifiers? It says every shelf in the library, in every shelf in the library, okay, so and X is the set of all shelves in the library. So, for every shelf in X, Okay, so I'll use some notation for shelves, say small s. So S1 reads, for every s in x, x is the set of all shelves. This second half of the statement is happening. That is, there is a mathematics book in this particular shelf. And this is happening for each shelf s. Okay, now if you look at the second half of the statement, that says there is a mathematics book in s. Now I have already picked up my shelf S and in the shelf S there are books. Okay. I will denote all the books in the shelf S by the notation BS. So supposing BS is the set of all books in the shelf S. So if I say B K then that will be the set of all books in the shelf K. Okay. Now, how can I write the statement S1 using quantifiers? For all x in x, there is a book, there is a mathematics book in S. Okay. So, S1, you can write it using quantifiers S. For every s in x, there is a book in the shelf S, that is BS. There is a book in the set of all books in the shelf S, where the book small b is a mathematics book. So the statement S1 which is here, the given statement can be written using quantifiers as this. For all S in X, there is B in BS such that B is a mathematics book. Okay. Now when will I say that this statement is false? Now this statement will be false when I am able to find one shelf in the library in which there is no mathematics book. Okay. So, if I want to uh, negate statements having uh, multiple quantifiers, we can do it layer by layer. Okay. So, B is a mathematics book. Its negation is B is not a mathematics book. There exists a book in BS. This is false. That means all the books are non-mathematics book and there is such a sh shelf in the library. Okay, so the negation of this will be there is a shelf in the library. So there exists one shelf in the library in which for every book in the, uh, in the shelf S, 
if you pick up any book in the shelf S, that book is not a, not a mathematics book. So the negation of the statement S1 using quantifiers would be this. Okay, so it's like you are writing each in place of each uh, existential quantifier, you are replacing that with the existential quantifier. Okay, and in plain English, this can be written as there is a shelf in the library, there is a shelf in the library in which each of the books is a non mathematics book. So, this is the negation of the statement S1. I hope that's clear. Let me look at one more example. Supposing I have a statement S2 which reads as there is a shelf in the library in which all the books are story books. Again, if you notice, there are two quantifiers involved here existential and the universal. Okay. Now, using quantifiers, how can I write this? First, again, I will uh, collect all the shelves in the library. So, let X be the set of all shelves in the library as in the previous example. So, what my statement says is there is a shelf in the library. So, there exists one shelf in the set of all shelves. So, there exists one shelf in X in which all the books are story books. Okay. So, there is a shelf small s in which all the books are story books. Now, if I look at the second half of the statement, all the books in S are story books. Uh, universal quantifier is involved here. Okay, so in the sh uh, shelf small s, I will denote all the books in small s by b s. So supposing b s is the set of all books in the shelf small s, then how can I write s2 using quantifiers? Okay, so there exists s in x such that no matter what book you pick up in s, that is a story books story book. So, every book in S will be a story book. Okay. So, S2 can be written as there is a shelf in X such that every B in BS. So, every book in the shelf S is a story book. Okay. So, using quantifiers, S2 will look like this. Now, if I want to negate S2, again we do it layer by layer. This says there is a shelf in the library. So, its negation would be if you pick up any shelf in the library there is a book which is not a story book in every shelf okay so its negation would be for every shelf in x for every s in x i am able to find at least one book which is not a story book okay so this is the negation of s2 and if i want to write the negation of s2 in plain english that will read as given any shelf in the library, it has a non-story book or given any shelf in the library, there is a book which is not a story book. Okay. Now, this given any for any, you can, uh, in the last video, I have given some phases which mean the same. They are, there are around four. So, you can use any one of those here instead of given any if you wish to use a different one. Okay. Now, let me look at one more example. Uh, supposing I have a statement which says A is bounded above in R. What do you mean by set is bounded in R? It means there is a real number which is bigger than or equal to every element of the set A. Okay. So, using quantifiers, how can I write S? S can be written as there is a real number alpha such that for every element X in A, x is less than or equal to a. So, this alpha, real number alpha is an upper bound of a. Okay. Again, this statement has multiple quantifiers if you see the existential and the universal here. So, how will I negate this statement? So, we do it layer by layer again. There exists a real number such that for every point in a, that real number is bigger than or equal to the point a x in a. So, this is false means for every real number, you should be able to find at least one point in a. So, there should be, there exists uh, a point in a which is bigger than alpha. Okay. So, again you do it layer by layer here. The existential will be replaced by the universal quantifier and 
the universal will be replaced by the existential and the negation of this is this by law of trichonomy okay so this means the set a is not bounded in not bounded above in r okay similarly you can uh, 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 do an example uh, which says a is bounded below in r and you can write the statement in quantifiers and you can negate it okay let me look at one more example supposing i have a statement t which says a function f from x to y is on to what do you mean by f is on to for every point in y there is a point in x which is mapped to the point in y okay so using quantifiers this can be written as for every y in y there exists x in x such that image of x is y such that f of x is equal to y now the negation of this will be again you do it layer by layer so not t would be there is a point y in y such that for all x in x f of x is not equal to y okay so you negate this layer by layer and you get this and in plain english t not t would be f from x to y is not on to okay so these are a few examples involving multiple quantifiers now uh, if i look at the statement of this type for every x in x there is y in y such that y has some property p the existence of y which i am talking about here in some cases it may depend on the point x here okay so the y existence of y may depend on x for different x from capital x it is possible that the y here changes okay so this y may depend on x if you look at this example this says for every human being x for every human being x there is a human being y such that y is a father of x okay so this says every human being has a father now if if x changes if i look at two different people who are not related possibly then the element y would be different here okay similarly if you look at this example this says for every non zero real number for all x in r star there is a real number such that xy equal to 1 okay this says every non zero real number has a multiplicative inverse now if i pick up x equal to 2 here then the y here will be half because 2 into half would give you 1 and half is the multiplicative inverse of 2 but if i change the point here and i write x equal to 3 then the corresponding y here would be 1 by 3 okay so the y this y it uh, totally depends on x in this particular example so for different x you could have different y here okay now what i'll do is i will again look at the same example for every human being x there is a human being y such that y is a father of x the same example which we saw just now now in this what i'll do is i will interchange the quantifiers okay there is a human being y this part i will replace it with the first part for every human being x so we will interchange the positions of the quantifiers and we will see whether Uh, the meaning of the statement remains the same or not so interchanging the quantifiers we will have there is a human being y such that for every human being x y is the father of x what does this mean can you think for a while what does this mean this says there is a human being who is the father of every human being okay there is a human being y who is the father of every human being x so the if you see the meaning of the statement completely changes okay the initial statement said every human being has a father whereas this one says there is a human being who is the father of every human being okay so the meaning of the statement may completely change if you interchange the quantifiers i hope that's clear let's look at uh, one more example uh, the second example says for every uh, real non zero real number x there is a real number y such that xy equal to 
okay every non zero real number has a multiplicative inverse in r okay now if i interchange the quantifiers in this what is going to happen let's see so interchanging the quantifiers what we will have is there exist y in r such that for every non zero real number x xy equal to 1 what is the meaning of this one this says there is a real number which is the multiplicative inverse of every non zero real number okay this means there is a real number which is the multiplicative inverse of every non zero real number whereas this said every non zero num real number has a multiplicative inverse okay so if you interchange the quantifiers the positioning of the quantifiers the meaning of the statement may completely change okay i hope that's clear so the order in which the quantifiers appear in a statement is important you simply cannot swap the quantifiers okay now uh, look at this example a subset a of r is bounded above in r that means there is a real number alpha such that for every point x in a x is less than or equal to a what is going to happen if i interchange the quantifiers here okay so interchanging the quantifiers we have for every x in a there is alpha in r such that x is less than or equal to alpha that is the meaning of the original statement and the statement obtained after after interchanging the quantifiers the same okay what does this mean are these two sentence statements the same okay so i will leave this as an exercise for you uh, you can comment in the comment section of the video what does the statement mean after interchanging the quantifiers okay so do comment the meaning of this statement and then you can compare this one and this one both the statements and you can see whether they convey the same meaning or not all right and these are the reference books i used thank you